everyone. Welcome to Miss Allison's Kitchen. I am here today to show you how to substitute for butter when you're running low on butter uh, for a cookie recipe. So you know the regular chocolate chip cookie recipe, right? When you have to use a whole cup of butter. Some, at this time, I've been running out of butter like crazy, so I don't wanna use all, all my butter. So sometimes I have a big stockpile of peanut butter. So I decided to try it one day to substitute one half cup of peanut butter instead of one half cup of butter. And uh, so, I, um, so I tried it one day and I, it came out really great. So here's what I do. I will add my one half cup of butter and then I will add my half cup of peanut butter, your favorite brand whatever you choose. And I would mix it up like I would if I was making my usual cookies. Now I know a lot of people will, <clears throat> you can see that mixture. A lot of people will use a blender for mixing cookies. Um, sometimes when the butter is too hard, I will put it in the microwave to soften it up. So hold on one sec. So I do that, and then uh, I mix in my sugars, like you normally make with your regular chocolate chip cookie recipe. Oh, that's much better. Easy to stir, nice and soft, but it's really important if you want your cookies to come up really tasty, not to use a blender to hand mix it. And it's good for your muscles too. So that's that. I got that all mixed up nice and mixed. There's a few butter lumps in there, but those will probably dissolve once I get mixing the rest of the ingredients. So I put my three quarters cup of brown sugar in and I will pour some more sugar there. Another three quarters cup of white sugar like that blend it and good and what's next one teaspoon of vanilla Just like that. And mix that around a little bit. A couple of eggs. I usually just crack them right over the, the container there. And another one. Two eggs. I just kind of blend that all together. And you can see it's nice and gooey, like it usually is. When you mix these things together. And I pre measured everything just to make it easier for the video. Okay, so. What's next? We gotta add our flour. It's two and a quarter cups of flour, measured out ahead. And one teaspoon of baking soda. A little bit more, I kind of went under on that one. And one teaspoon of salt. And mix that up. I know this is very exciting. Oh, and make sure you wash your hands before you start cooking, because that's always a good practice to get into, especially in this washing hand time, the extreme washing hands time. And let's see how we're doing. We're getting there. See, it's mixing up nice, 
like a regular chocolate chip cookie recipe. But you know what's great about this recipe? Is it tastes just enough like peanut butter to be a real peanut buttery cookie. So what I'm gonna do is finish up with that and add chocolate chips. There we go. I did like a, a cup and a half. That's what I usually do when I make chocolate chip cookies. I usually mix a cup and a half, not two cups. Sometimes there's too many chocolate chips. Okay, and you could also do the Hershey Kisses or whatever you like. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is, now I know some people are really particular about measuring their cookies, but I am not. What I like to do is just take a tablespoon, do this, grab it kind of loosely. We're gonna make a little bit of balls with that. So I'm gonna take it and I'm going to place it on the tray like you would a chocolate, um, like you would a peanut butter cookie actually, if you can see. And just roll it away. <laughs> and just do, hold on a sec. Just do a crisscross with a fork like that. And I have parchment paper on my pan and I have my oven set at 350 degrees. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do all of these, and I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna pop it in the oven, and then I'm gonna pull them back out, and I'm gonna show you how they turned out. I'll be right back. Okay, so I popped all those cookies in the oven, and um, so what I thought I would do is roll all my balls up ahead of time, and um, keep some in the fridge or the freezer, so we don't eat too many cookies all at once around here. If they're there, we'll eat them all. So I do that ahead of time a lot of times and I'll pop them in the freezer for another day. And uh, I think it's a good plan, you know, for when you're just looking for something quick to, um, to munch on. So I'm just gonna keep on doing that. If you want, um, you can sprinkle some sugar on it on the outside. Um, some people like a little extra sugar for their cookies, and um, sometimes it comes out better like that. Uh, hey, what else can I say? Um, so, I hope that you all are doing well. The idea behind this series is to come up with ideas for substitutions for those times when you run out of something. Um, so, in the future videos, I'm going to try some other substitutions. Um, and I know that a lot of us aren't going to the store as often, so we're running out of things. So I thought this would be a good um, opportunity to um, talk about substitutions. And so I don't think our cookies are ready yet, so I'm going to put us on pause and I'll come back in a little bit. Hello again. It's time to take those cookies out of the oven. I cooked them at 350 degrees for about nine minutes or so. That's what I usually do. I don't like them too dark. I like them a little soft. Um, it looks like these came out perfect. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? Just remember you can always add more chocolate chips if you like more chocolate. Less, you can do white chocolate chips. You can add any kind of chip you like, um, but if you like peanut butter and chocolate combination, this is perfect. So I hope you enjoyed um, my peanut butter substitution for butter in cookies. And uh, I hope you try this at home and I'll make sure I put the recipe with this post. Um, enjoy your day and thanks for joining me in Allison's Kitchen.